This episode brought to you by Van Helsing's Creature Codex, Monster of the Week's official, unofficial bestiary. My name is Michael, I have been absolutely fascinated by tabletop role-playing games for the better part of my life, and this message will self-destruct in three seconds. Welcome to... The game of Monster of the Week is chock full of tropes and quirks from all across the spooky media, each playbook offering its own piece of the world building puzzle. Some add to our playscape more than others. Last week we talked about the Initiate, whose very existence brings to a campaign an entire ancient sect of monster slaying knowledge wizards. And that's a lot to consider. Today we're going to talk about a playbook that brings just as much world building lore to the table, but this time instead of robes, tomes, and magic, it's suits, emails, and paperwork. It's the professional. You can't tell people the weather is controlled by Gerald from accounting. The professional works for a vague, shadowy, secretive government or corporate agency tasked with the silent protection of humanity from the things that go bump in the night. It's functionally very similar to the initiate, but it replaces the magic bits with technology. Dissimilarly to the initiate, the professional isn't as well built for combat. That's not to say they're bad in a fight because whew, uh, they can handle themselves. But the professional is most useful in tactics, field medicine, and total situational awareness. First of all, not many playbooks in Monster of the Week offer a move like Medic, which allows us to resolve harm on ourselves and others. In a combat encounter, the amount of harm being doled out by the monster or monsters can make or break an entire session. Being able to mitigate that harm is exceedingly helpful. Taking the mobility move gives you and your hunting team a whole big van all full of all the monster hunting stuff you could ever want. The professional playbook offers some really sweet perks that benefit the team as a whole. Also, it should be noted that I can't think of any Dungeons and Dragons concept to relate to this playbook, which is awesome because Monster of the Week is not D&D. Of course, your agency supplies you with tactical gear and weaponry and all that good monster hunting stuff. But here's where it gets really fun. Keepers, much like the Initiate, the professional playbook shoehorns into our campaign a massive chunk of world building lore. A vast, powerful, secretive agency of highly trained monster assassins is kind of a big deal. And just like with the Initiate, it is crucial that we sit down with our hunter who is playing this playbook and we get our stories straight. How long has this agency been operating? Where are the headquarters? Who runs it? What is the hierarchical structure therein? These in-depth conversations establish our game's canon. They are absolutely necessary for good continuity and smooth gameplay. Now, let's just for funsies, do a little thought experiment. Let's say you're running a campaign with both a professional and an initiate in your party. Now it's time for a bigger discussion. Does the agency know about the sect or vice versa? How might they feel about each other? Are they sharing resources or are they at odds even on the same side against the darkness? At this point, the pregame conversations have done like 90% of the crucial world building we need to run a campaign. I mean, just that alone is fodder for months of gaming. The narrative control of the agency is kept between the hands of the keeper and the hunter, but remember that continuity is key. And I may regret ever saying this, but when all is said and done, what the keeper says keeps. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this one sparked some ideas for, for you and your game. Don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe if you haven't already because every little bit of interaction goes to help create more content like this for people like you. And stick around because now I'm gonna tell you about a super cool resource that you are gonna want for yourself. If you're like me and you're always looking for rad myths and monsters to spice up your game, then you absolutely have to check out Van Helsing's Creature Codex. So my friend Bobby over at Roleplays cooked up this little bestiary for Monster of the Week and it is, oh boy, it's, it's something. It is super useful for both hunters and keepers alike. 
It features 16 unique monsters and eerily beautiful illustrations, and it's all steeped in this super cool, like, handwritten, antique journal aesthetic, which is extra cool because it makes for an amazing table prop that can exist in worlds in your game. It's bonkers, the link is in the description, and keep an eye out for volume two, The Vampire Namicon, which is coming out in 2022. And while you're looking for cool things to spice up your game, my Monster of the Week campaign setting, Raven Creek, is available for free on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Michael Wingate. You do not have to be a patron to get the PDF. It is free, but if you feel like hopping on the, you know, choo-choo, uh, patron train, <laughs> Uh, you know, that would be that would be super, super cool of you. Also, I have merch. It's fun, it's nerdy, and it's available on my website at wingatethebrand.com. Okay, enough capitalism. <laughs>